Doamnelor și domnilor senatori și deputați, distinși și colegi, membri ai guvernului. Gravity Rush, also known as Gravity Days in Japan, originally came out back in 2012 on everybody's favorite console that nobody owns. Well, it's the PlayStation Vita, boys and girls. But more importantly, Gravity Rush Remastered came out on PlayStation 4 in early 2016, meaning people could actually play it this time. Let me just uh, offer my two cents here. First and foremost, you're wrong about everything you've presented in this video so far. Mainly, I own a PS Vita, so that already disproves your claim. Uh, so at this point, uh, you can never recover from the shame, so go ahead and delete your channel. Proved you wrong. Should've known better. Sure, it's unfortunate that the Vita's possibly best title no longer is an exclusive, but I don't have to buy another console to play the game, so in the end, we all win. Well, I do at least. The remaster has quite a few improvements over the Vita version, as it was done by the masters of remasters, Bluepoint Games. Those are the same guys that did the Metal Gear and Ico HD collections for PS3, which all ran beautifully and looked great. So on PlayStation 4, Gravity Rush runs at 1080p at a locked 60fps, and it is great. Sadly though, my capture card doesn't actually do 60fps at 1080p, but trust me, it's a huge improvement over the Vita version, which I haven't actually played. But before we get into the review itself, I figured I should say that there will be some light spoilers. Nothing major, just gonna be very light spoilers as I just said two seconds ago. But just in case you wanna go in completely blind, well, why are you watching a video on it? Let's go. In Gravity Rush, you play as Cat. That's Cat with a K, by the way. A girl who has the ability to manipulate gravity and fly all over the place. However, the game starts out with her waking up having no memories of who she is, why she can do these things, or even where the hell she is. Though if you ask me, she kinda looks like a stripper. Partied too hard last night, perhaps? Although she has no memories, Kat is very heroic, and she ends up saving a kid from some monsters called Navi and a gravity storm. But this kid and his father are some of the most ungrateful dickheads in all of Hexaville. That's the name of the city, by the way, but I'll get back to that later. So what if she ruined your house? It was a ruin anyways. This bad experience doesn't stop Cat from helping other people, though. And she even gets the name Cat from a guy she helped out called Sid because, well, she's got a cat following her around at all times. And a girl needs a name. Cat then names her cat Dusty. And Dusty seems to be what gives her her abilities. There's also another girl with the same kind of powers. Though she has a raven instead of a cat, and she definitely looks like a stripper. Hmm, intriguing. The game takes place on the floating city Hexaville, where Cat wakes up with amnesia. The story centers around Cat and her trying to figure out who she is and what's even going on. And as I said earlier, she quickly figures out that she can fly and starts out helping people. You see, creatures known as the Nevi, or Nevi, I'm not quite sure about your pronunciation, frequently attack Hexaville, causing damage to the city and scaring people. And nobody knows where they're from or what they want. They only know that their attacks are increasing. The city also suffers from so-called gravity storms, which might be connected to the Nevi. And Cat, being a heroic lady, decides to kick some Nevi ass. As for Hexaville itself, it's split into four different districts, who all have a differently colored sky somehow, and whose names I shall now butcher. Aunoa, Old Town, Pleyinu, Entertainment District, and Estria, Factory District, and last but not least, Venda Center. Each district has its own unique atmosphere, architecture, music, and yes, sky color. I really like this though. It makes each area have its own feel, and makes the world itself feel more alive and strange. However, the districts all have missing pieces that just disappeared into thin air some time ago. The world of Gravity Rush is a mysterious one. 
And what makes it even stranger is that this guy is apparently some sort of god that created this world? I'm not really sure. But he sure as hell has got some sort of powers as he teleports you into himself? Uh, inside this man, just roll with it, we find the missing pieces of Hexaville, and even some poor people who got trapped there. And after kicking some nevy ass, we bring them back, baby. What you've probably noticed by now is that there seems to be a very big tree next to Hexaville. I mean, you might not have actually guessed that it is a tree, but it is a tree. No one actually knows what lies below Hexaville, or how far down the tree actually goes. But maybe, just maybe, you do go down there throughout the game. I'm not gonna spoil anything. Though at first the story seems like it's going to be your typical magical anime girl turns out to be an actual god and saves the entire world because everybody loves her kind of story. Okay, that might not actually be that common of a story, but what I'm trying to say is that the story takes many unexpected turns and it goes places you wouldn't expect out of something that starts out so typical. And although the story is fairly lighthearted and fun, it does have some more somber moments that add depth and make you care more about this strange world and its characters. And it also raises the stakes as you actually give a damn. And not to get into too spoilery aspects here, but the ending leaves a lot of questions unanswered and makes the story feel like it's the first part of a larger one. That's not to say that I feel unsatisfied with this story, in fact I really like it. But it definitely leaves room open for a sequel, which I should buy soon. The story itself is mostly told through comic book-like panels, with some really nice artwork. And although there are some proper cutscenes that actually have voice acting, the language spoken isn't actually a real language. It's just a kind of French made up one. But it isn't really used that often. Probably because this game was originally on a handheld. But in my opinion, the comic book style works quite well, so no complaints from me. Most of your time playing the game is spent flying around Hexaville, doing missions, side missions, or collecting gems that you can use to level up your powers and abilities. Or power up machines that improve the city and unlock more side missions. Well, I say flying, but Cat doesn't actually fly as much as she falls. You see, what you actually do is change what direction down is, and then fall whichever way that is. This might be a little confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, which takes like 10 minutes, it's tons of fun to fall slash fly all around Hexaville. And seeing how down is whichever direction you want, you can walk on walls, ceilings, and pretty much everything with a surface until your gravity gauge runs out. But with great gravity powers comes great gravity combat. The Nevi are very plentiful throughout the game, but thankfully fighting them is pretty fun. You can attack them by running around on the ground and kicking them, but what kind of loser does that? What I recommend doing is fly up in the air and use the homing attack. No, not the sonic kind. You can also pick up nearby objects and hurl them towards the enemies, so combat does have some variation. There's also special powers you unlock throughout the game, unleashing after you get enough energy, and those deal massive damage. I won't show all of them because it might be fun to explore them for yourself, but trust me they're pretty damn cool. However, combat can become a bit too repetitive, especially towards the end of the game when waves upon waves of them appear, 
It lacks depth such as combos to pull off, but it thankfully never gets too tedious, at least from my experience. And I have heard that this has been improved in Gravity Rush 2, so fingers crossed. Aside from story missions and fighting Nevi, there sadly isn't really all that much to do in Hexaville. Sure, you can fly around collecting gems, but that can get a bit boring after a while. Thankfully, there are some side story missions such as becoming a maid for a very angry woman and helping her find her missing husband. Uh, this one includes a very awful stealth section though, mind you. But it's thankfully the only stealth section of the game. Another side story is joining the army to help them fight the Navi. I think there are 4 side stories in total, and apparently they were all DLC on the Vita version, and they all came with their own costumes. That also happens to coincide with some fetishes, yeah, I'm not judging. But they're thankfully all included on the PlayStation 4 version. And while they aren't necessary to complete the game, they do a lot of world building and makes you more familiar with some of the characters. As for other stuff to do, there are some challenges spread around town that can be fun to do now and then. These challenges can be races against time with limited gravity, or see how many enemies you can kill within a time frame. They are more of a skill test than anything, and give you quite a lot of gems if you're good. So while not necessary, I do recommend doing a few, as they are quite fun. But yeah, all in all, Hexaville isn't the most content rich of places. But to me at least, this wasn't a huge issue as the story kept me engaged. And it was intended for a handheld experience, so I can't complain too much. Gravity Rush Remaster is one hell of a good game, and it kind of has the charm of a PlayStation 2 game in a weird sort of way. My only complaints are fairly minor, the combat not being super deep, and that certain cutscenes, such as the ones where you kill a boss, are really fucking loud compared to the rest of the game. But this should not stop you from buying this game. I truly recommend picking this game up as it's not too expensive, unless you live in America, and it is super fucking fun. Plus with Gravity Rush 2 having recently come out, just fucking buy it and play it. <laughs>